John, how would you respond to church members who claim to follow Christ but believe that whites are superior to other races by God's design? Um, yeah, it, how I respond to people is governed not just by facts that I know from the Bible and from experience, but by the moment of the inner, inner, uh, interchange. In other words, what am I seeing? What, what is their attitude? What, I'm trying to read their heart as well as their head here because I can immediately respond with, uh, I got some facts for you <laughs> from the Bible and I think from life, but that, that may not be the most immediate thing to do. So the answer is I'm not sure how I'd respond, but I would, I would try to discern what, what's, is this person saying that on the basis of some book they've read, like the bell curve, or, or are they saying it on the basis of some experience they've had growing up around a certain ethnic group where they've seen everybody act a certain way, so they're generalizing over the whole group. Um, are they saying this because some one person did something horrible in their life, or, or is it because they, their dad always talked this way, or just where are they coming from? And I want to try to go for that heart issue along the way. Maybe not first, but somewhere along the way. So that's, that's the first thing I would say. The second thing I would say is that um, I think they'd be hard pressed to show from the Bible that that's true. I, I've written a, a paper, it's probably on the line, I don't know, about whether or not the so-called curse of Ham in Genesis is God's way of saying that uh, since Ham uh, was the father of the Africans, therefore uh, all Africans, since Ham was made the servant of uh, Shem, Seth, Shem, uh, therefore all Africans are subservient to those who are the descendants of Shem. I just don't think that works because the curse fell on Canaan, and Canaan is not the father of the Africans, he's the father of another group of, of people. And so if you try to work out the details of that old Hamitic curse and say that's the biblical basis for this, I don't think it'll stand exegetically. So that'd be the second uh, direction I'd go. Here's the, here's the last thing I'd probably say. I would say, look, my guess is that if you took every single nationality, Korean, German, Chinese, Indonesian, Indian, every one of them has traits about them, I don't know if they're genetic or, or upbringing, that are different. Um, frankly, I've got stereotypes. To me, Germans are clean. Zauberkeit, Zauberkeit. I spent three years in Germany, and, and those women were always out there cleaning their cement steps every morning. I said, what is this? So I've got this stereotype that Germans are that way. I, I frankly think that's a good thing, but then we could have negative stereotypes about one group. Now, we're all different. I don't know if these things are, how, how genetically based they are. Here's what I know. God calls me to love my neighbor as I love myself. God calls me to love my enemy. Therefore, I think it is, in one sense, irrelevant what all those different stereotypes are in the way we begin to treat people and love people and care for people. So I'm going to take that person kind of by the neck if they're in my church and say, Let's, you, just, you can just lay this thing down. You can lay this stereotype. You can lay this prejudice. You can lay this racism down because when it comes to how we relate to each other, the cross is the issue not your stereotypes about white, black, red, yellow, or any other ethnicity in between.